Dentine hypersensitivity. So in the first part of this presentation, we discussed about dentin hypersensitivity etiology and pathogenesis in detail. Moving ahead now, so in this part of the presentation, we'll discuss about different treatment modalities for dentin hypersensitivity. So let's just recap what we read in the previous presentation regarding the mechanism of dentin hypersensitivity. So in response to stimulus such as thermal mechanical evaporative work or chemical stimulus, the dentinal tubules in the exposed dentin open up. The rate of dentinal fluid flow in these open exposed tubules is increased. This consequently results in the generation of action potential which then passes to the brain and results in the sensation of pain. So the agents used for the treatment of dentin hypersensitivity function at one or more of these steps. The first treatment modality could be to avoid pain producing stimulus. So the patient should avoid being exposed to the stimulus that can lead to dentin hypersensitivity. Now if dentin hypersensitivity has already occurred then what can be done about that to treat it? The second method is occluding the dentinal tubules. So we saw that in the exposed dentine, the dentinal tubules open up leading to turbulence in the dentinal fluid flow. So the, if these tubules are occluded, then it will result in pain alleviation. The tubules can be occluded via formation of a smear layer by increased formation of intratubular dentine. As we saw in the previous presentation that dentine has tremendous reparative potential. And similarly, the third type could be increased formation of tertiary dentin. Another technique to reduce dentin hypersensitivity is to decrease intradentinal nerve excitability. So, a wide range of products are available for treatment. So, as we just saw, the hypersensitive dentin can be treated by two main mechanisms. The first one is occluding the open dentinal tubules and the second one is depolarization of the nerve fibers. The first group of products works by occluding the open tubules and decreasing palpal fluid flow. So this group includes fluorides, fluoride varnishes, fluoride iontophoresis, tissue fixatives, oxalates, remineralizing agents and pro-argent technology. So we discussed about pro-argent technology in the previous presentation. The second group of products works by depolarizing the nerve so that it cannot transmit the pain response. The ingredient that produces this effect is potassium nitrate. So let's take a look at each one of them individually now. Fluorides. Patients can apply stannous fluoride in a 0.4% gel or sodium fluoride in a 0.5% mouth rinse or a 1.1% gel. Fluorides reduce the permeability of dentine probably by precipitation of insoluble calcium fluoride inside the dentinal tubules and reduce sensitivity. Fluoride application is believed to work through a reaction between the fluoride ion and ionized calcium in the tubular fluid. This reaction forms an insoluble calcium fluoride precipitate in the tubules, thus blocking them. Different fluoride show different efficacies. Stannous fluoride is believed to be more effective than sodium fluoride in concentrations used for toothpaste formulations. The second type is fluoride varnishes. The desensitization effect of fluoride varnishes is transient since the material is abraded soon after placement, hence many applications may be necessary. Durafat is a 5% sodium fluoride varnish applied in the office with a syringe style applicator at approximately 0.3 to 0.5 ml of varnish to each tooth and dental floss can then be used to draw the varnish into proximally. Topical fluorides are believed to form a barrier by precipitating calcium fluoride on the exposed dentin surface and reduce dentin permeability. So in the first image you can see in response to heat the fluid gets evaporated and reduces in volume whereas in response to cold stimulus there is increase in volume of the dentinal fluid and when we apply a layer of dental varnish which in this image is represented by the yellow color. So it blocks the dentinal tubule so the stimulus either hot or cold is not able to act on the dentinal fluid and they remain constant in volume. Fluoride iontophoresis. It is a process of influencing ionic motion by an electric current and has been used as a desensitizing procedure in conjunction with sodium fluoride. So the iontophoretic device is made up of an anode which is positively charged and a cathode which is negatively charged and the movement of ions occurs towards cathode. So the anode or the positive electrode is placed on the patient's face or arm 
and the negative electrode is placed on dentine or the tooth surface. So this completes the circuit. Isolate the tooth with cotton rolls and then the and Vaseline is applied on the soft tissues in order to prevent any injury. Current is applied by the use of an adapted plastic tip around the tooth. Fluoride is negatively charged, so fluoride in the form of either 2% of sodium fluoride or 1.23% of APF that is acetylated phosphate is applied. So fluoride is negatively charged and it is applied on the negatively charged electrode. Current is adjusted until the patient feels some sensation. Then the procedure is repeated after 7 days. The advantage of fluoride antiferesis is that about 2 to 6 times more fluoride can be impregnated into dentine than when treated with topical sodium fluoride. So this provides immediate reduction in sensitivity after treatment with antiferesis. The next one is tissue fixatives. So tissue fixative desensitizing products contain agents such as ultraldehyde or HEMA. These agents bind to tissue fluid proteins in the dentinal tubules and the superficial cells of the subsequent pulp and denature or coagulate these proteins. These products cannot be placed near the gingival epithelium since they may cause necrosis of the gingiva as well as the loss of the biological attachment so precautions should be taken regarding that. Oxalates Desensitizers containing metallic salts, predominantly oxalates such as 3% potassium oxalate which form insoluble chemical precipitates like calcium oxalate in the peritubular dentine can be used. So uh, the advantage of using oxalates is that it does not require acid etching or light curing as well as they cause no irritation of the gingival tissues. So it forms a complex with the calcium rich zone of the peritubular dentine to create a crystal plug. So here in this image you can see the white cotton appearance of the crystal plug. Now this effectively shuts down dentine sensitivity at approximately 100% level so that's quite effective yet the action of oxalate is short lived and it tends to be removed by brushing so it's better that we acid etch the tooth with 35% of phosphoric acid prior to placement so as to increase its longevity. Remineralizing paste. These are used in office or at home to restore the minerals that have leached out of patients' teeth due to caries, diet, etc. Two active ingredients have been shown to be most effective for this purpose. That's calcium sodium phosphosilicate bioactive glass and amorphous calcium phosphate. ACPCPP is the most effective casein phosphopeptide amorphous calcium phosphate where the casein portion that is derived from milk binds the ACP to the tooth surface and forms a protective mineral barrier of hydroxyapatite which occludes the exposed internal tubules. So this is a graphic representation of the process of dentine remineralization, saturation of the oral environment and biofilm with calcium and phosphate ions promote the dentine remineralization process and in the second image the exposed internal tubules have been blocked by mineral precipitation from CPP ACP. So these pastes are placed in the affected areas after regular brushing. They can be applied as in-office agents as well. Now coming to pro-argent technology. So in 2002, Klenberg developed a material to reduce sensitivity based on saliva's natural role in reducing sensitivity. So we saw in the mechanism section that saliva provides calcium and phosphate which over time occlude open dentinal tubules. Proagen technology was developed based on this role that saliva plays in naturally reducing hypersensitivity. The proagen formula contains arginine which is an amino acid found in saliva. The positively charged arginine binds to the negatively charged dentine surface. This attracts calcium rich layer from the saliva to infiltrate and block the dentinal tubule. So this is an electron microscopic photograph of open dentinal tubules in hypersensitivity. And the second image shows tubules blocked by calcium phosphate. This technology is available for in-office application through a paste which is delivered by a prophylaxis cup. So there is also toothpaste for at-home use. The in-office paste has been found to provide immediate and lasting relief hypersensitivity for about 4 weeks. Now coming to the second major group of desensitization products which work by depolarizing the nerve that transmits the pain response. So after the nerve is depolarized it cannot repolarize and this diminishes its excitability. The ingredient that produces this effect is potassium nitrate. According to the FDA, for potassium nitrate toothpaste to claim to be desensitizing, it must contain 5% of the ingredient. To understand how a chemical desensitization agent works, let's first understand how a nerve cell transmits pain stimuli. 
When the nerve cell is at rest, the potassium ion concentration is higher on the inside of the cell than on the outside, while the sodium ion concentration is higher on the outside of the cell than on the inside. When the nerve cell is stimulated, these ions cross the nerve cell membrane through channels and move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, which is referred to as the concentration gradient. Thus, potassium ions flow from the inside to the outside of the cell and the sensation of pain is transmitted. Potassium ion is a desensitization agent because it diffuses through dentinal tubules and increases the extracellular potassium concentration at the nerve ending, eliminating the potassium ion concentration gradient across the nerve cell membrane. Without this concentration gradient, the nerve cell will not depolarize and will not respond to stimuli. Thus, the sensation of pain will not be transmitted. Potassium nitrate products are ideal for post-bleaching sensitivity which occurs due to easy passage of peroxide through the enamel and dentine to the pulp. Now let's take a look at some recent progress in treatment of dentine hypersensitivity. Laser treatment, laser therapy was recommended by Kaimura et al. to treat dentine hypersensitivity with effectiveness between 5.2% and 100% depending on the type of laser and parameters used. According to some authors, lasers are more effective than other treatments. Regarding the mechanism of laser treatment for dentin hypersensitivity, Pashte suggested that it may occur through coagulation and protein precipitation of the plasma in the dentinal fluid or by alteration of the nerve fiber activity. The study by McCarthy et al. indicates that the reduction in dentin hypersensitivity could be the result of alteration of the root dentinal surface, physically occluding the dentinal tubules. Prehybridized dentine. Post cementation hypersensitivity may occur after newly cemented restoration is placed. The symptoms are usually a short, sharp pain that occurs when a tooth is exposed to thermal or chemical stimuli. Usually, post cementation hypersensitivity may occur when a tooth that has recently been restored with a crown or inlay or onlay. At the first stage, the adhesive system is applied and light cured immediately after the ending of the tooth preparation and previous tooth impression procedure. At the second stage, prior to the final cementation of the indirect restoration, a new layer of the bonding agent is applied without light curing. Because the hybrid layer is created immediately after preparation, teeth treated with the immediate dentin sealing technique were better able to tolerate thermal and functional loads in comparison to teeth that were sealed when the restorations were placed. Bioglass so, Novamin, the active ingredient in a dent shield bioglass agent, is a bioactive glass that has been grouped into fine particulate with a median size of less than 20 millimeters and is composed of calcium, phosphorus, sodium, and silicon. When exposed to an aqueous environment, it releases calcium and phosphate ions. A layer is formed through several reactions starting from nucleation sites and finally crystallizes into hydroxyl carbonate apatite which is equivalent to hydroxyl phosphate apatite in biological behavior. It's acid resistant so it offers long time relief thus alleviating hypersensitivity. So this was about dentin hypersensitivity, the different treatment modalities and with this we complete the topic of dentin hypersensitivity. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.